Hello, in this video we are going to be talking about how to sync your Zotero. So to get started, you are going to want to open up your Zotero that is on your desktop or on your laptop. And your first thing is going to be, after opening it up, is uh, if you're using a Windows or a PC computer, you're going to come up here to the top right next to File where it says Edit. And you're going to click on Edit and at the bottom of that drop down list, you're going to have the option of Preferences. So you would click on that. Um, if you're using a Mac computer, um, one last step you're going to be looking for preferences. Okay, so from here, we're going to click on sync. Uh, it's that second option in the list. It's also got kind of like blue arrows that are crossing over each other. And um, we are going to click on the option of create account. So over here on that right side, it is the first option right next to username. So we would click on create account and it should open you um, a window that goes to an internet browser um, and give you this option for registering um, where you would fill these different things out. So you'd fill out username, coming up with some kind of username, um, and it's going to give you some different things. You know, it's got to be at least three characters and use some, um, may only use like upper and lowercase numbers, that sort of thing. Uh, you also put in an email address. You'll confirm the email address by typing it in, a, in once more. You'll do a password and then a verifying password, writing the password one more time, clicking on that I'm not a robot option and clicking register. Um, this will set you up for a free account. Zotero is free to download, and if you have already downloaded it, um, setting yourself up with a free account is just going to allow you to sync and access your library from anywhere and kind of back up all of your um, files that maybe you've stuck in there that are attachments or just the um, various like resources that you have stuck within that. So once you get kind of all these different things filled out and you've clicked on register, you're going to get um, an option that um, that is going to send to your email. So you will get an email. So keeping your email kind of readily there um, is a good idea. Um, and so in this email, it's just going to say like, welcome to Zotero. And it's going to ask that you kind of validate your registration. So it's going to give you a link. Um, and that link you can copy and paste into your browser. And it's just going to be so that you can kind of get started. So um, now that we kind of have our um, account uh, created, we've registered for it, we're good to go. Um, I'm going to close out of that just so then we don't have to get distracted by that and what you're going to do is we're going to actually perform that syncing. So we're going to type in the username that we use when we registered. We're going to put in that password that we used and what you're going to do is you're going to click on this option here at the bottom underneath the username and password that says set up syncing. So we're going to click on that. Then what you should get after you've clicked on setup syncing is you'll have, it'll say data syncing. Um, it's going to list that username that you used and you're going to have options like, you know, do you want to have it syncing automatically? Do you want to sync your full text um, content? Um, some a few other like options and you can just leave those and not mark those, um, not uncheck those boxes and then you will click OK. One other thing that you should kind of know as you're hanging out in your Zotero um, application is that you um, you do have a syncing button. So anytime that you kind of want to treat, um, you, you know, think of syncing kind of similar to how it is with saving. So um, while it may say that it's syncing automatically, you may just want to make sure that you do this as you know that you're kind of collecting lots of things. Um, up here on the right hand of the screen, um, you're going to have this little arrow uh, that looks like it's kind of doubling back. 
so it looks like it's kind of circling around to the right side. It's green, uh, it's rather kind of tiny. Uh, when you hover over it, it's going to mention uh, the syncing with Zotero.org, and it'll mention if you've done a previous sync, which in my case I have, but um, clicking on it, it will uh, ask that it syncs once more. It's going to kind of spin around a little bit. It may take just a little bit of time for it to sync, um, just based on how much stuff that you may have within your library. Once it's done syncing, then um, then you kind of know that uh, that it's done it and that all of your things are um, good to go. One way that you can also check is that um, you're going to have, well, one way that you're going to know for sure is that we are going to, so I'm going to, we're going to close out of here just so then we can, I can show you what it looks like uh, from the web browser. So if in the case that you are kind of doing this to back up your information and if you're also wanting to do this so that you can um, continue to use Zotero but from the web so if in the case that you're on a computer that uh, doesn't have Zotero installed or maybe you're just not sure if it does um, what you can do is use the web version um, to get into the web version we're going to open up an internet browser in this case I'm using Google Chrome but you can pick whichever one that you feel comfortable with. I'm going to go to Zotero.org and up here at the very top we have kind of a list of options across the top. So we have groups, documentation, forums, get involved, log in, and upgrade storage. We're going to click on the option log in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in once again that username or email address um, in this case that we use to register with. We're going to put in our password. Um, I will just mention that if you're using the web browser um, on a computer that um, belongs to you, but like I said, maybe you haven't downloaded Zotero quite yet, you could use the option of clicking the checkbox to remember uh, me where it will keep you signed in, but only do that on a computer that uh, other people maybe aren't using uh, if you do not want them to be able to access your materials. And then you just click on log into Zotero. As you can see um, in the syncing process, uh, my library is here. Uh, so if I click on library, all of the articles that I've kind of been collecting, uh, books, and even websites and videos are here. Uh, all my folders are here, so um, I'm able to get into my, uh, my English folder and my nursing folder that I had existing here as well. Um, you also kind of just notice that things are going to be pretty much exactly the same. Not a whole lot's going to really change between um, either versions of... Uh, Zotero other than uh, this will refer to this as being your web library because you are accessing it online rather than through the desktop application. Um, the other thing that you'll want to know is that because you're using the web version you will not have the option of using that Zotero connector that you may have been using um, previously on a computer that you had it installed to. So on your own personal computer um, or the computer that you're using, um, you know, predominantly you may be downloaded the Zotero connector um, to be using within Google Chrome or, um, you know, Internet Explorer or uh, Firefox. So, um, but, uh, do not fear, you can still add things um, as you're finding them. So if you're using that web browser, so you're using this web browser and you want to, um, you know, add in maybe potentially books or um, articles that maybe you're finding because you're continuing to research, you can add those. So up here towards the top, you're going to see like a little plus sign. Uh, if you hover over it, it's going to say new item. What you can do is you can click on that. You have the option then of doing, um, of adding book, uh, book section, which is going to be like a book chapter, uh, cases, maybe hearings, um, and journal articles. So clicking on any of those, what you will then get, uh, in this case I had clicked on journal article, you will get kind of a blank um, 
a blank one uh, where you would then manually have to add in the information. So you would have to add in the title, um, publication, volume, issue, page numbers, dates, that sort of thing. Um, you also, towards the bottom, can add in the URL, URL that you accessed it from, just to better help you get back to it. You also can, under, uh, back up here a little bit at, towards the top, um, you've got info, notes, tags, and attachments. Under attachments, what you can do is you can add files. So what you could do is you could download PDFs um, that you're looking at and maybe utilizing, and then you would just have to add those files to, um, to each of the uh, new items that you uh, were adding. So um, that way you're still able to add uh, new items, new articles to your library. Um, you would just be doing them manually rather than uh, using that Zotero connector previously. So this kind of shows you guys the different versions um, of what that looks like and then um, kind of when you're done what you would do is come up towards the top where it has that username that you logged in with. You would click on the little um, kind of chevron next to it or you could just click on the name, uh, your username itself and you're going to go down to the bottom where it says log out. Um, thus kind of kicking you out of the uh, web version. So that's pretty much how you can sync your Zotero so that you can use it if in the case that you're using other computers or if you kind of just want to use it in a way to have, um, have a backup um, in the case that maybe your computer dies or you maybe are just struggling to, you know, utilize Zotero on the desktop um, application or if there's just something funky going on. Um, as always, uh, we are uh, we here in the library um, are more than happy to help you out. So if you uh, have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to get in touch with us via email at library at clark.edu. You can also email any of us directly. Mm -hmm.